Over the past year, there have been 30% more cloud engineer jobs on the job market, and I'm going to explain to you today the top three skills that you need to become a cloud engineer. Now, these are the top three skills that are really going to make you stand out. They're not just your general things like learning the cloud provider and learning something like Linux, because those are all just prerequisites to become basic systems engineers or infrastructure engineers even before you move on to cloud engineering. Now, those three skills are going to be Terraform, Networking and Programming. Now let's break down why each one of these are essential and for you to focus on to master. Now if we start with Terraform, which is infrastructure as code, in cloud environments, manual configurations are very error prone and they're not very efficient. They can be very slow to do everything manually. In industry, we would call this click ops. Now Terraform allows you to define and provision your infrastructure using code, making those deployments much more consistent and scalable and dry. Dry means do not repeat yourself. Within Terraform, you can create your own custom modules that you can reuse. Now, if you can master Terraform, you can automate complex steps, reduce human error, and you can manage resources across multiple cloud providers because Terraform is cloud agnostic. Now, the next thing that's really beneficial about Terraform that I want to focus on is state management. When you're deploying cloud infrastructure, maintaining state of your environment is crucial and Terraform gives you the ability to do that with a state file. Now, what does a state file actually do? Well, it keeps tracks of all your resources that you have in your cloud, enabling you to plan and apply those changes effectively. And you can also destroy them effectively through the CLI. Now, every state file will need to be backed up. If you're working on AWS, you would store it into an S3. And the reason we use state files with Terraform is down to locking. Now, I want you to paint a picture. You have six cloud engineers working on a team. They're all managing the architecture for a really large client. As you can imagine, that architecture is going to cost thousands or potentially even millions of dollars. And the last thing you want is your cloud engineers making changes to that state file at the same time and causing a drift within your Terraform configuration. Now, you're wondering, well, how does that work? How do you prevent that from happening? Well, that's where the state file comes into play with the locking. Now, if I make changes to some Terraform code on my pull request and my team member is doing exactly the same thing and I run my apply right before he does or he runs his plan, etc., that state file is going to become locked so no one else can run changes at exactly the same time as me. And that is why state is so important in Terraform. Now, as I briefly mentioned before, my third point is making use of Terraform modules. They're re reusable and building blocks for your infrastructure. Now, if you can create your own custom modules, that sets you apart from a lot of engineers. When people are initially first learning Terraform, they don't begin by creating their own custom modules because they need to learn Terraform. When you're actually working in industry, every single company you're going to be working for, where you become more experienced, you're going to have modules. And a lot of those modules will be in one repo configured with variable, TFRs files, data, outputs, etc. And that's the best practices of using Terraform is what they recommend to do. So it makes complex configurations more simple. So it speeds up that development process of getting your architecture out there. And it makes your code base a lot more easier to maintain. Now let's move on to networking. Now, as you know, I've always said on this channel that networking is the backbone of your infrastructure. It's the cornerstone. And as an engineer, you need to understand how data moves across your network and how to design network within a cloud environment because it is slightly different to on-premises. And always remember, you're not just building networks, you're securing them as well. So you really need to knuckle down your networking fundamentals like your subnets, VPCs, routing, NAT gateways, and understanding the differences between a lot of the cloud networking services. I know some people usually message me like, what's the difference between an internet gateway and a NAT gateway? So those sort of questions you need to have already answered up in your head. And that is foundational to building robust and secure cloud architecture. Now, the next thing I want you to get your hands on with, with networking is actually troubleshooting those problems, you know? Cloud environments can become complex, and then when something goes wrong, you need to know how to diagnose and fix those issues. And there are many, many, many tools out there for networking. You know, have Tracefruit, Ping, uh, Wireshark, and you've got all the monitoring tools that are bespoke to cloud providers, or even there's a lot more open source monitoring tools now that you can spin up yourself on a self-hosted server. So if you can troubleshoot networking problems, you'll become invaluable to your team and employers. And remember, as all good network engineers say, it's never the network until it's the network. Now my final point on networking is, remember not every company you're going to be working for is 100% cloud. You know, myself as I work in consulting, I come across a lot of people who are still operating on hybrid environments where they have some on-premises data centers left over from their cloud migration. And they are connected. So if you know how to connect the cloud 
to on-prem and back again and make sure the networks communicate effectively, that's going to be very beneficial as well. I'd probably say that's a crucial skill considering we're in a time where operational costs of running cloud environments is still pretty expensive and a lot of enterprise companies aren't completely moving away from on-prem to cloud and just having cloud. So you need to know and understand things like VPNs, direct connections, firewalls, all that stuff. Now third and finally, we are moving on to programming, particularly with Python and Bash. Now the reason I say Python and Bash is because as we know, Bash is the native scripting language of Linux and a lot of cloud environments are running on Linux. People don't really build products to host on Windows servers. And the best way to learn Python and Bash is by automating routine tasks. That's the very way that I learned. And that's the way that I learned, you know, with uh, Python, for example, one of the things I did very early on in the day is like think about things you do every day. Like when I turn on my laptop, I will have probably maybe three or four web pages I open every day and always have open. So you could create a very small Python script to automate opening that and create that into like a desktop shortcut. You click it and they all open at once instead of opening Safari, and typing in the website, clicking in favorites, etc. So as a cloud engineer, you constantly need to manage and orchestrate resources and automation is key to doing this efficiently. Python and Bash are both versatile languages that can help you automate everything from resource provisioning to monitoring and maintenance tasks. Now, once you've moved on from figuring out how to use Bash on Linux and using Python in your everyday life, you need to move on to how to use those within cloud environments. So if we take Python, for example, AWS has something called Boto3, which is their pretty much their SDK for Python. So you you can write a Python script to interact with the body through Python library, which hits up straight into your AWS API within your account, connected with your IAM permissions through the command line. And automation doesn't stop there with Python and Bash. You know, there are a lot of the time as a cloud engineer, you're going to be implementing those scripts and those dependencies you've created for installing software into CI CD pipelines using tools like Jenkins, GitLab, or GitHub Actions. So by mastering these, you'll be able to streamline your workflow and reduce your deployment times. I've been in technology 10 years, the amount of scripts I've wrote to reduce man hours and even save companies money is, you know, it's never ending. Now these skills, Terraform, networking and coding are absolutely essential for any cloud engineer. So if you can focus on these areas, you'll be well equipped to build, manage and optimize your cloud environments. And ultimately, what's that going to make you? It's going to make you a valuable asset to any organization.